In the summertime, my beachfront town is a lot of fun. On the weekends, we go to the beach or someone's pool during the day and to one of the beach bars at night. I'm getting a little older though, and a lot of my guy friends that I used to go out with on the weekends are no longer single and don't really look to do that anymore. So it's harder to make plans these days than it used to be. One time when I was out with my friends though, these two guys approached my friends and I at the bar being friendly because they overheard our conversation and joined in. They looked like they were maybe 8 years older than us, in their mid-30s. They were on the shorter side, but seemed cool enough to hang around. Their names were Alec and James. They ended up bar hopping with us that night. Alec left before James, who stayed late into the night with us. He seemed to like me the most because he would talk to me the most. Eventually, my friends wanted to go home, and so did I, and James seemed disappointed like he wanted to stay out until the bars closed. I told him we'd all chill again soon, and then we left. The following weekend, none of my friends wanted to go out, so when I was trying to find plans, I get a text from James. He asked what I'm up to tonight, and I said no plans, what are you guys doing? He said we should go to this beach bar. I figured why not, I needed plans anyway, and him and Alex seemed alright last time. He offered to pick me up, so I took him up on that offer. When he pulled up to my house at like 9 or 10, I went for the back seat expecting Alex to be in the passenger seat, but when I opened the door, he said sit in the front. It was just James in the car. On the way to the bar, I asked James if Alec or anyone else would be meeting up. He said probably. I wasn't aware it was going to be just him, but whatever. He suggested we go to this dive bar first to pregame a bit before going to the beach bar which had a dance floor. I said sure. He brought us to a hole in the wall bar. It was really dark in there with a moody red glow. He ordered us a few rounds of drinks. I already had a couple shots before leaving my house. So after these drinks, I was feeling pretty drunk already. At one point, I had to go to the bathroom. And when I got back, he had two more drinks on the counter for us. I didn't even finish my previous one yet. I was shocked he was buying all these drinks for us. I figured it was an older person thing. After drinking this last drink is where my memory completely went black. The next thing I remember was waking up in a pitch black room. I was on the floor. I felt around for my phone in my pockets, but couldn't find it. I stood up and held my arms out in front of me until I felt the wall. I started feeling around the wall for a light switch. I found it finally and flicked it on. I found myself inside of a small, concrete floor room with a hot water heater and various household cleaning objects like a mop and bucket. There was a closed door in the room. I was beyond confused and absolutely terrified. Where was I? I slowly opened the door which led to another pitch black room. A little bit of the light from the small room leaked into the other room. I could tell now it was a carpeted basement. I saw a few pieces of furniture in the room. I couldn't find a light switch though, so I had to make my way through the dark basement, banging into things. I was looking for the stairs when I heard movement behind me, like someone getting up off a couch. Then the familiar voice of James saying my name. I screamed and turned to face the darkness. I could only see the outline of his body across the room. He said, calm down, it's not what you think. You got too drunk at the bar, so I brought you back here. All I could think to say was, why did you put me in that room on the floor? Where are my belongings? My voice felt weak. He came closer to me and said, I have all your stuff upstairs, just relax and lay down. I told him, I'm leaving, just bring me upstairs to my stuff and I'm going home. He said in a slightly more menacing tone, no, you're not leaving. This was where I threatened him physically, and he responded in a way implying that he had some kind of weapon and he would use it if I tried to leave. His claim was that I was too drunk to drive. I kept saying I'm calling an Uber. He then said, relax, I'm going to get you a glass of water and you're going to go back to sleep. I didn't know what to do in this unheard of, terrifying situation. I didn't know what he was planning to do to me, but this whole situation was a giant red flag. He walked past me and went up the stairs. When he got to the top, I heard him unlock the basement door with a key, then open it and shut the door and lock it. I looked for some kind of blunt object I could use as a weapon, but there was literally nothing. I had no choice but to sneak up to the top of the stairs and wait behind the door for him. A long while passed, maybe five minutes, before I heard the sound of the door unlocking, and I was instantly ready to attack the second the door opened. I pushed him to the ground and had him in a chokehold. I yelled at him, where's my phone and wallet, seriously choking him. I let up a bit so he could breathe and speak. He said, on the kitchen table. I asked if he had any weapons on him. He said a switchblade in his pocket. 
I reached for it out of his pocket and switched it open. He then explained the best he could with his throat under my arm that he was only looking out for me. I got up off of him, went to the kitchen, grabbed my belongings from the table, and quickly left the house. I called my brother, who is also my roommate, right away, and he picked up having been woken up from the call. I explained everything and asked him to pick me up. He came right away. The next day, I went to urgent care to get tested, and rehypnol was found in my urine. It was confirmed that he roofied me. I then spoke to a lawyer and have since filed a civil suit against James, which is still in progress and we're building a case. However, there is no clear-cut proof that James was actually the one to roofie me, or that he had any illegal intentions afterward. However, I do believe that I have a good case considering that he left me on the floor and hid my belongings upstairs. I still to this day don't know what his end goal was. I don't even like to think about whether he did anything weird to me while I was out. In the summertime, I like to spend my time doing outdoor activities. In the summer, I stay with my family in Monton, Pennsylvania. We have two acres of land, a little shooting range in the yard, a quad, two dirt bikes, and trails through the woods right by the house that I often ride through. One warm but cloudy day, I had nothing to do, so I wanted to get some exercise and took my bicycle out. I have a mountain bike at my parents' house, so I prefer to take it on the trail rather than the roads. I stepped outside and looked at the clouds. It just looks so cool, yellow sky peeking through the dark, stormy-looking clouds just a bit. I could smell the approaching summer storm. I love the atmosphere. I checked the forecast before leaving, and I figured I'd have a quick half-hour bike ride before it started raining. Even if I got a little wet, I wouldn't care. I set off from the property towards the trail in the woods. I could feel and hear the gust fronts, and I loved it. This was my favorite kind of weather to bike in. Much of the ride starting out was uphill and the way back is mostly downhill, which works out nicely. The uphill eventually peaks around a bit of an opening in the woods. That's where I usually stop to rest for a bit. When I got to the opening on this dark day, as usual, I stopped to catch my breath after all the uphill pedaling. I browsed through my phone for a minute, looking at texts and such, and that's when the sound of the wind and all the leaves blowing suddenly stopped, and it was dead silent. There was no wind anymore. I looked around, shocked and kind of intrigued. I'd never seen such a heavy gust front suddenly stop out of nowhere. I looked all around me, suddenly getting an uneasy feeling. I was starting to think I was hearing some kind of voice, a very high-pitched voice at that. I hoped it was just an animal. The darkness under the clouds and trees, the silence, the sky, and now the sounds I was hearing all coming together were creating an unexplainably creepy setting. And then, perhaps because of the dead silence now, I was able to hear sticks cracking not far away. And when I looked in that direction, I saw something about 30 to 40 feet from me in the trees, in the direction where the trail continues to go. The best I could describe what I was seeing was some humanoid looking figure hunched over as if it were hiding, stalking me like I were prey. And at that moment, it started to rain, hard. The sound of the raindrops hitting the leaves above killed the unbearable silence. At this moment, I turned and pedaled as fast as I could back to the top of the hill and allowed gravity to help bring me home faster, the whole time scared to look behind me. Lightning started to flash and thunder started to crash. In any other scenario, I'd think this was awesome, but I had just witnessed something unexplainable. I made it home, put my bike in the shed, and went inside. I was so shook and out of breath, I didn't even bother explaining to anyone. I went upstairs and crawled into bed, and that night, I had a nightmare of the incident seeing a demonic figure in the woods in the middle of the night floating towards me. I woke up with my heart racing, happy it was just a dream. It was an all-around disturbing day and night. Every summer, my parents go away for a few weeks to our vacation home in Savannah, Georgia. That leaves me home alone with our two cats. We live on a canal. My dad has a Boston Whaler and two jet skis in the yard. Across the canal from us is Marsh, and further down the canal is a park. Not a lot of boat traffic passes our yard as a result, and it's very private and secluded. Our house is decently big, but I feel like my dad probably spent more money on the boat than he did our house, to be honest. It draws a lot of attention. I loved when my parents would be gone for their trip, especially since I'm off during the summer and have free reign to do whatever I want, and have over whoever I want, just no parties. 
I had the girl I was seeing for a little bit over to hang out in the backyard one night. We sat in the hot tub, and when the hot tub cycled off and it went quiet out, I heard something from the canal. Sometimes you'd hear fish or birds splashing in the water, but this sounded more rhythmic. I stood up and saw in the canal someone kayaking by. I couldn't see anything more than that though. No features, I couldn't even see what they were wearing. A little unusual this hour at night and this far up the canal. But it is a public canal nonetheless, and it was not a cause for alarm. I did tell the girl I was with how unusual it was though. Little did I know that that was not the last time I'd be seeing that person. Later that night, when we were in bed upstairs, I had the windows closed because the AC was on. The windows in my room faced the canal in the backyard. I had turned off the lamp next to my bed and was watching The Sopranos with a girl who was sleeping over. Suddenly, a white light was flashing through the window. It was moving around sporadically. Both of our reactions at first were simply, what the actual hell is that? She asked if that's a helicopter light, which I dismissed immediately because that was silly. I said, I think it's a flashlight. I turned off the TV to bring total darkness in the room. Then I got off the bed and stepped just to the side of the window so I could peek out and see where the light was coming from. I saw. It was someone waving a flashlight from the canal. In fact, it looked like that person on the kayak again. The girl I was with, who I'll just call Jane from here on out, asked me what it was. I told her it's that guy from the kayak before waving a flashlight through the window. She asked why is he doing that, and how did he know we were in this specific room? I told her it must have been because he saw the light from the TV screen through the window. He already knew someone was in here. Having a girl in the room gave me that basic, primal urge to act like a man and not be scared. So I opened the window and yelled out, what do you want? A weak sounding man yelled back, please, I need help. I yelled back, are you hurt or lost? He yelled back, I'm injured and I can't get out of the kayak. I looked at Jane and asked her opinion of what I should do. She said I should go out there and help him. I called back out to the man, do you want me to call 911? And he called back, no, I just need help getting out of this kayak. I called back to the man, okay, I'll come out. I closed the window, then I sighed and told Jane to wish me luck. She wasn't wearing much clothes in the bed, so I wasn't going to make her get dressed and go out there with me. I threw on a t-shirt and ran downstairs. Then I threw on my slides and opened the back door. I turned on the backyard lights and stepped outside. And that's when I heard a blood-curdling scream from upstairs. It was Jane, screaming my name. I looked around the yard in response in a panic, and I saw a man running towards me from the canal. I ran inside and slammed the door shut and locked it, with only two seconds to spare because there was a giant bang on the door, followed by the man trying to twist the doorknob open. I grabbed the entire knife holder from the kitchen and brought it upstairs. I locked my bedroom door, and Jane told me she saw that man sneaking up on me the second I turned on the lights outside. He was no old, weak, injured man. He was this big-looking guy. We were paranoid that he was lurking around the property still. I called my dad to tell him what happened, and he told me I should be on the phone with the police right now, not him. So I called 911, and the police came, did a search of the property, did a report, then rang some of the neighbor's doorbells. Any of my neighbors who answered didn't see anything. The strange part was that the kayak was gone, which led me to believe he ran back to get it and likely ran into the marsh. The fact that we have a decently nice house and an $800,000 boat in the backyard in a secluded, tucked away spot of the canal probably made us look like an easy target to break into that night. That person may have even somehow knew that my parents were away. Scary of how I didn't have a girl over that night, I wouldn't have made it back inside in time to lock the door. If you want to see a bonus summertime horror story exclusive to my Apple Music, Amazon Unlimited, and Spotify, click the link in the description. Also, thank you to Parabooks for sponsoring this video.